Can everyone hear me? We can yes. hear you. Yes. We can see you. Okay. Um, All right. So um, it's great, great to be here uh, virtually. But uh, I, I agree that this is a, uh, I agree with Bill, this is a really, uh, I think, just a really good time to have kind of a discussion around uh, multicultural uh, publishing. But I just wanted to start off by saying, <clears throat> I, I wanted to try something a little bit different in terms of um, making this more of a discussion around a subject rather than my presenting a lot of information about why someone should or shouldn't or or all of those kinds of things. I, I just wanted to sort of look into, you know, through through discussion, um, what it means and what we think about when when uh, those opportunities are presented, or or sort of when whenever we we walk by an opportunity to publish with a multicultural company, because um, there's some uh, preconceived conceptions as to what we're what we're talking about. Um, but before we get started. Um, what do we, what do we have? How many people in this group about, uh, uh, about 14 people? Um, and, and I guess everyone's already done an introduction. Is that correct? Uh, well, we introduced the speakers, but we didn't go one by one and All introduce right, well, we, 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 All right, we, we don't have, we don't totally have to do empty. that. But, I'm um, but I would like, as as people jump in, to sort of um, just say a little something about yourself, so that at least I and, and a few others can 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 know a little bit more. Um, I'm retired, and um, and I started out uh, many years ago with the, with this idea that it would be really easy, cool, and and not really a lot of hard work to start a publishing company, a little small uh, publishing company. And, and so I had this idea of it would be sort of a, a boutique type publishing company that specialized in publishing multicultural, we started out with multicultural children's books. And um, our, our slogan was sort of the little, the little book uh, company that could. And it was based on the fact that we specialized in finding authors who were new and emerging and they didn't, um, they probably wouldn't get a good shot at some of the, the, uh, the, the larger publishing houses. And so my, my, my concept was, well, why, why not us? And, um, <clears throat> and eventually it became so successful, we, we moved beyond just children's multicultural books in, in terms of we moved into um, uh, adult novels and, and, and fiction and, and all these kinds of things. But the thing that kept bugging me the whole time was, what in the heck did I mean by a multicultural publishing company? What was I, what was I looking for? And one of the things that kept coming at me was people were um, passing us by. And when I say people, I'm talking about people who um, basically are from, from the majority, the, 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 the white sector of, of publishing and writing and authors and illustrators because there was this word multicultural in there. And I then as I started to get into the business, people would say to me, well, you know, my book's not really multicultural. And so therefore I didn't think it'd be good for your company. And, and I said, well, let me take a read at your book. And I found a couple of things. One, they were right. Their book just had no sense of, of trying to, to engage and pull into it. Um, any opportunity to reflect the diversity, the multiculturalism of our, of our world. <clears throat> and, and, the, and the second was, I was getting uh, sort of these submissions from authors, really good little stories um, of, you know, this little girl who spent the summer on the beach and she met these other kids and they hunted for seashells and they did all these really nice things that kids, you see them on the seashore, they love to do. Well, the problem was every single one of her characters, every single one of her thoughts was built around um, a, a, a non-diverse or non-multicultural uh, aspect of our culture. And I would ask, why, why wouldn't you try to expand your story so that um, it reflected some, some reality of what was going on in the world around us? Now, sometimes 
the story was built so that that wasn't possible because it was a one dimensional or, or, or whatever story. Um, but oftentimes I would find people say, well, I just never thought about it. And to give you a greater example, and I'll stop talking so much, <clears throat> we were doing one um, uh, particular children's book and we assigned it to an author to do. And the author is very good, uh, very, I'm not, not author, illustrator, very good illustrator. And they were sort of putting the pictures together and then they were doing all the pictures and stuff. And we were going really good pictures and, and it was really exciting. Then we got about three quarters through the pictures, no, almost to the end. And someone said, you know, there's not one child of color in this whole book. And we were just like stunned. We were a multicultural pu publishing company and we had looked at a story and we didn't realize that we weren't taking our own opportunity to, to, to make the book as diverse as, as it could be uh, with a simple thing like um, <clears throat> portraying the kids of different cultures and races and so forth and so on. So I really started to reflect on what it meant and why so many people were sort of missing the opportunity to look at um, multicultural publishing or, or, or publishing your work with that type of company uh, as, as an opportunity versus that's not, for, that's not for us, that's for someone else. And I thought it'd be good just to have a conversation as to what, what we think about um, and, and, and when we um, look at publishers and, and what motivates us and do we stop and look at the Lee and Lowe publishing companies that are, you know, you know, a, a major publisher in, in the United States, or do we go on and just look at certain other companies because there's an assumption um, that it's not, it's not for us. And so I kind of tongue in cheek said, let me have, I'd like to have a workshop, a discussion where we don't get into stats and statistics and charts, but just a conversation about what would encourage us, what would motivate us to, to take that step and what barriers are stopping us from taking this step other than, and I made an assumption, I made an assumption that 99.9% .9 of my audience would be um, probably um, white or, or, or would be white. That's simple, simple as that. And there's no problem with that, just that's the assumption. And so therefore, it's the perfect audience to have this kind of discussion. So um, that's sort of framing what I'd like to get into. Um, and I'd, I'd like some thoughts or feedback on, um, uh, on, on what I've said, if that's, uh, if you want to take that step out there uh, on the limb. Yeah, Michael, I'd love to talk about that because I, as an author and publisher, I just decided I wanted to write uh, one of the books that I'm writing now is called My Soul Has No Wrinkles. Okay. And I was looking for a cover. I sent out, I outsourced a lot of them. And everyone I came back with looked like a white lady in cosmetics. Okay. And this time, what <laughs> I think what I'm saying is, at least consciousness in some areas is raising because it offended me to see that. And I thought, no, maybe I'll try a black lady then or a Mexican lady, but I thought black people don't wrinkle like I do <laughs> or like that, you know? I mean, that's another one of the other reticence is what do I know? Do I know enough? about another culture to be able to incorporate it and who can I ask? So I decided that rather than put that white lady out there, I was gonna stylize it, make it purple, okay? Because I didn't want it to be a white lady. I just didn't, and I didn't know how to do it better. Yeah, and you, and you know, you hit on something really, really, really important. Uh, well, two things, one, one sort of tongue in cheek, um, you probably found there's no purple people, but that's, that's okay. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is, you said something really, really important. You said, I don't know, or I didn't know. And so I'm going, that's probably one of the most important bases to begin to write about diversity or, or to include it. 
is is the is the realization that I don't know, and and, and can, can you just see all the wonderful things you can do with that, and 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 that's that's what I mean by when when we stop and sort of look at the 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 world of you know what it means to write in a multicultural world, and it's just like for example if if there were publishers called um, instead of the multicultural publishing company it was called the majority majority publishing company which primarily was trying to seek white authors and and then I and I decided I was going to to apply to that publishing industry I could say well you know I don't really know what it means to 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 be white I mean and, and I never thought about that actually but I you know, now that I'm thinking about it I don't necessarily know what that means so therefore do I not have the ability to write about and to portray people in that in, in, in that world in my book that includes people from that world. So you really hit on something really important there in terms of, uh, and then the other thing you said was consciousness. It's really about consciousness. It's, it's really about trying to take, like for example, you see much more on, on the movies, you see um, black characters now starting to, to portray um, uh, major title positions, which, which were historically reserved for, um, for, for white people. And, and, you're, and you're going, you know, you suddenly see Denzel Washington or somebody portraying, um, you know, I, I can't think of a character right now, but, but you go, wow, that was a really good portrayal. And, and it didn't matter. We were, we're realizing it didn't matter what, what color that person was to portray that particular thing. And, you know, that, that's, that's more in the shadows, like that's just physical, but there's so much more. So I, I really like, I really like what, you know, what, what you're saying with that. Yeah, I was Mark. afraid I was going to offend somebody. By <laughs> and you can't really go up to a person and say, could you please tell me what I got wrong in this? If, mm -hmm. if you're a black person, could you do me a favor? But you, me? but you could, you could. Yeah. And I just, I just did. I just wrote something yeah. where I sent it out to a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, for beta reading in, in a primarily white community. And it was about, it was, it was a multicultural story on um, um, uh, African-Americans growing up from, from the uh, colonial days, whatever. And I was so impressed with the feedback I got from an audience that I, I didn't know, I wouldn't normally think to ask you for, what do you think about this book? And, and, and one of the people said to me, gee, all the white people in your book are portrayed as, as, as sort of racist, greedy, da, da, da. Was, there, was there any nice white person there? And I'm going, you know, that's a really good point that I missed. And that's, that's what we talk about when we, when mm -hmm. we talk about your consciousness and so forth and so forth. But Charlotte, you had something? Yeah, I just, I do podcasting and uh, publishing as well. But my thought about working in diversity and inclusion and disability and things like that, which we tend to kind of, I don't know, shy away from, or it's mm -hmm. just not part of the mainstream or something. But you know, like in, in my rowing, I have a rowing podcast about rowing and I try and bring in people as experts, diverse voices that, ha that have nothing to do with diversity and rowing, but mm -hmm. have, they're talking about, you know, how to maximize your performance as a, you know, over 60 athlete or something, you know, like, okay, that's, okay. you know, like, but it takes a mindfulness, I think, you know, like once again, yeah. Yeah, because it's, I mean, you may want to do it, but you just kind of have to keep it since the tide has been over centuries, you know, not to do that. You, you kind of have to make an intention. To, you're, you're, yeah. the, the intention, and you're, and, you're, and you're so right, because mm -hmm. it's it's really, in a way, it's it's putting yourself out there to, you know, and, and, and you're kind of like, all right, I, I, I'd like to do this, but I don't really know and I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to offend anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a way, you're putting yourself out there and you're saying, um, you're acknowledging, you're saying, hey, listen, I don't know, but could you give me some insight on this or, or how, how, do I go about, how do I go about doing this? And so uh, again, you're, you're hitting on that, the intention. You have to have an intention to do something. Um, 
to, to, to kind of kind of make that work. Um, did I see, oh, they left for a second. Um, Tortoise has a mess, uh, question. Yeah, Tortoise, it, actually, it's actually, well, there you are. Yep, actually, it's a comment. Uh, a few years ago, I, in on a different kind of subject, before we were as aware of multiculturalism and especially uh, racism, that uh, it, it's wise to think yourself as an anthropologist, that mm. you're an mm. informant, because it's not just saying it right, it's how it's going to land. And yeah. so mm -hmm. to, ha to have that feedback, you know, it is there, you may have set up green flags that you didn't intend to, or red flags that you didn't intend to, but uh, that that's why getting the, the beta reading or in early on, you know, not, yeah. not when the manuscript is all finished, you know, is there something I should tweak here? No, I mean, the, the basic core of it, you know, a, 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 am I on the right track here? That's, that's, that's very, very important. Uh, again, it, it's, it's taking a step. Uh, it's, it's letting yourself be open to, um, I won't say criticism, but be open to sort of possible barbs to come back in terms of, well, gee, that's not right or, or whatever. And I hope people, I think people are a little, are a little more supportive than that. Um, but getting the beta reading is 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 really really uh, a good good point. Well, let me ask a question. So, if you were writing a, a a book and it and you were trying to get into something that was a little a uh, little more diverse than maybe your usual area, and it, like the diversity could be anything. It could be handicraft. It could be uh, it could be um, gay uh, gay rights. What what whatever it is. But you're you're getting into uh, an area that you want to try to do something a little bit different, a little more, a little more deeper. Where do you find a bait? Let's say if you want to write a book that has a little section around uh, what's going on with uh, African American relations in America today, and you want to get beta readers, where would you go? Anyone have a sense of where you would go to get those beta readers? There's a group called Galleyways. I know it's a Gal. Now, t what what do they do? <laughs> you muted, Charlotte. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Galleyways, it's it's an association for multicultural publishers and to to uh, nurture authors and and in oh, different okay. kind different media. So just look up Galleyways. They're on LinkedIn and uh, yeah, yeah, my guy. Yeah, they're cool. They're really cool. Okay, so so this guy, what what's what's another uh, type type of group that we might we might go to? Yes. Well, social media is our friend. Yes, it can be. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> yeah, harnessed and and guarded against. Yeah, we we did a Black Lives Matter street mural in Bennington and an outgrowth of it, which was a volunteer effort, uh, was, uh, was a Facebook group. And so what I would do is to just send out a, hey, you know, here, here's what I'm looking for. Anybody have any suggestions? Mm -hmm. that, that, it's, it's, really, it's, it's, it's really almost that, that, that simple. Um, uh, the, the spot that I found, which was really, really great, um, was on Facebook, and I'm sure most social media pages have this, they have a, a section that's called um, All Things East Hampton or All Things Marlboro or All Things uh, New Hartford, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about? They're, they're sort of these little town um, or city uh, talking uh, memberships where it's about that particular area. And so, like, for example, I know if I went to all things East Hampton and I published or I, I printed something in there, it's going to primarily reach people who are, are white, upper income, uh, or, you know, working class, or whatever, because that's who lives in that town. So that's why it, it, you just have to type in the word all things and just name a town. Um, and 
and it brings you to people that um, you normally don't have uh, contact with. And you just write something about I'm writing a book or I'm, or I'm thinking of a, of a premise and, and here's what I'd like to know or here, here's where I'd like some feedback. Who's interested in doing that? Um, you will be shocked. No, you wouldn't because I know you all have tried this um, at the number of people who respond and saying, oh, let me take, let me take a look. I did that for, for a particular, an all white town on, a, on a, all, a book that's pretty much multicultural. I had 25 beta reader responses <laughs> and uh, it was incredible uh, the insights that they gave me. Now, only of the 25, only about 12, 13 people um, actually read and then wrote back, but that's a pretty high for me. That was a pretty high rate. And so I was, I was very happy with that. So um, people are all around us. Just, just, um, just open, open, open your thoughts to. Uh, um, you might know of a particular uh, church which has a, a larger um, 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 black or multicultural, diverse or uh, population or whatever, and you just send them a note saying, "Hey, this is what we're interested in." The, the object is the whole idea is opening our minds to how do we make a difference? How do we, how do we incorporate things that we, that traditionally we sort of walk by because it's, it's easier to, to, to soft pedal by um, certain things. And it's the same for me as, as a black man, there are certain things I don't want to explore because it's a little bit harder for me. And I feel, I feel a little like, gee, I don't want to step on any toes. I don't want to, even like this conversation, I'm, I'm having this conversation with, well, right now, um, primarily three, three white women, and I'm going, okay, so I don't want to come across as someone who is, all I think about is, 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 is multicultural. That's, my world is broader than that. And yeah. so I don't want to pigeonhole you into saying, okay, so what are you saying? We don't think about these things. And so you have to kind of put yourself out there and, 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 and be open to, uh, and to people hitting bad. It looked like you had a thought on that, uh, Charlotte. Yeah, I had, um, you know, my, you know, heightened awareness of these issues. Um, going on Instagram, I found some amazing communities of like with hashtags. So, you know, BIPOC, rowers of color, uh, rowing in color, you know, mm. there's a lot of, there are a lot of wonderful, rich communities that you can find um, that way. I've, had some great conversations. That, that suggests that finding common ground of uh, your interest yeah. and your location mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it, and, and is, is a way, you know, I, it isn't I'm just interested in you because you're black or, or vice versa, but you already have the beginning of a relationship. Yeah, I, I think that's common ground if you, if you have common ground, that's the best place to start, obviously, because everyone likes to be on common ground. It just makes it makes it so easier. But the other place that people like uh, to start is when you ask for help. When you say, I don't know something or I'd like to learn something. Um, and then that sort of is letting down your guard, which allows the other person to let down their guard. And, and so the, the, the technique of asking for help or saying, I'd like to learn more about something, that's a really, that's another key that opens up doors for you uh, in terms of, uh, of, of other possibilities. So um, the common ground is extremely important and I need help um, is, is really good in terms of uh, letting people talk to you with their guards down. Well, Michael, as I feeling invisible what is what is the most offensive thing that um that you found that writers who don't live in a community like yours or in a black community or whatever what's the most offensive thing because i mean i had black and white in my nurses books and just wrote them the way they were you know and i didn't get a lot of crap you know so well, because because you you th that the, the key is to, to try to write the world as you see it and as you understand it. Now, 
realizing you may see it and understand it in a way that's more that may be offensive to other other folks. That's why I'm saying when you when you move in this area, you're you're opening yourself up to to sort of you know you're sort of letting your heart out there a little bit, and, and you know who likes to do that. Um, but but to to get to get to your point is. So if you're writing a story and you include sort of a, a natural relationship that's already that you see in life between a, 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 a nurse and a child or, or, or whatever it is, you have to understand that the way you see that becomes a part of, of, of a, a world that another person such as myself will see that relationship that you're portraying is possibly offensive. Yeah. So um, so you, you have to, that's why I think you, you talked on, uh, talked on to Carol about um, getting beta readers uh, from, from a light community so they could say to you, you know, that's a really good, powerful section you had there, but some people might be offended by the way you portrayed such and such. And there's nothing wrong with the way you portrayed based on the way you saw it. But there's something more powerful about your asking to say, how can I portray this better? Or am I or it may be that that's the way you want it to portray because that's life. That's just the way it is. And, and so that's why oftentimes we, we have good writing that, that people shy away from because they don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with this whole issue. Am I offending somebody? So therefore, I'll cut you out of my book, you know, <laughs> altogether. And then we miss something that's very valuable, something very important. I just yeah, wanted to I mention that Kiki, Kiki had a question. Right, Kiki has a question. Kiki Hi. has a question after. Who's yeah, that? well, this is an earlier question that I had when you're just asking general for questions. But I do have also one comment on like, if you're asking your friends, I would say like, if you're on Facebook and you put out a general call for like, does anyone want to, because I've had that, I'm talking from personal experience. I've had some people be like, can you read this for me? It's like a 200 page manuscript. Mm, like, yeah, is yeah. this offensive? And I, I think it's good to go out of your comfort zone. And like, especially if you're a white author, you should definitely talk about issues that, that relate to like people of color. And I think it's, it's great to try to stay open-minded and definitely ask from the community itself if it's offensive. But I would say to do so in a way that isn't just like more labor for them. Like I'm not gonna, it was hard for me to like make time in my day to just read this 200 page draft. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say like offer to pay them or like, yeah, go to one of these agencies that like that's their job to do that. Um, so that's one comment I had and like people, people respond to me, like, I also am really motivated to um, like want to help people do that. But at the same time, it is like a lot of extra work plus the work like people of color have to do in their everyday lives is like educating people on like whether or not they're being offensive. Oh, and, and, and you touch on something very, very important in terms of your, your the, I mean, should the question be to, to, to that audience, is my writing offensive versus asking them to do what a beta reading should do is to look at your work and, and give you feedback on your, on your work, which may include, which may include that. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you're right in terms of people can only read so much you know, before they get, you know, you know, overwhelmed with it. So you, you really have to keep reaching out to a larger audience all the time so that you're, you're getting people who like reading the kind of book that you, that you've, that you've mm -hmm. written. Um, so, so, you know, you, you touch on something really, really important there. And, um, Thank you. Uh, also, I did have an actual question, though, um, which was, so I introduced myself briefly, and I was just wondering, like, so in the beginning, we were talking about, like, why publish to a multicultural publisher, but I'm asking also, like, how do you publish to them? Like, is there a list? Do you have resources where we can, like, find, like, a list of different publishers um, or, like, yeah, just general resources yeah. that we can get connected to them? Yeah, I, I, I put that list together. I, I, will, sh I will share that towards Towards the, the end, or however however they're sharing paperwork around uh, on on the on the conference, but uh, essentially, um, it's 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 the same as when you decide you want you've written a piece and you say you know okay gosh this is at the point I really want to get this published I think it's a good piece of work and then you say okay who do I want to send this to and and so you start doing research around what company do I want to send my book to? And, and so, so consequently, 
um, you do the same thing in terms of ex of expanding your your world of who you want to send your book to to include some uh, the, there's not a lot, but there's a few very really good multicultural publishing companies in, in, in the uh, in companies in the country. So you 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 do the same thing with them that you do with with the other uh, publishing companies you're looking at. Who do I want to to try to bring into my world with this? And and let me look specifically at some multicultural publishing companies um, because they also are looking for. They're not looking for work all the time that's simply uh, 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 micro focused on issues of, of color or diversity. They're looking for books or works that reflect the world in which we live. And sometimes the world in which we live is very, very white, very, ex very exclusive, so forth and so on, um, which are, which I used to, when I used to teach, I used to tell my kids, it's, it's, you know, you can't just read Malcolm X. You can't just read uh, Martin Luther King's book. You have to go on and go beyond, you know, you know and, and find books that embrace other aspects of the world. So you will find companies, diverse uh, multicultural publishing companies that will receive those kinds of books with an extra open arm. And that's, that's the whole point of my original intro is, is that you're, you're leaving out a whole market that might be open to you because you're assuming that because you're, you're white, you're not going to fit into that market. And you may not fit into it, but that's the very reason they may want to pull you, pull you into it. No, thanks, thanks for that, Kiki. Any other comments down in that area? How about questions? Uh, we're, we're again. We're, this is. <laughs> I just had a thought. Was was this funny to me at least? Um, you know, and it's not every day you have you have a black publisher and writer and, and a really open guy you can ask questions to that he will not be offended. <laughs> so so don't 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 miss out. But. Uh, Anyone? Yes, uh, uh, Tortoise. Tortoise, yeah. Uh, one thing you say that people like to be asked for help. One thing I have heard, however, is that in this case, you're asking very specifically, I'm writing this book. I need some help with it rather than just, I need some help of how to talk to black people or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I, I've definitely heard that there is a lot of, of uh, impatience uh, about, hey, you know, <laughs> we've got our own work to do. And, and, and you know, don't, don't just ask us to, to, to explain it to you. You know, go out and do some of your well, own work. Well, that, that's, that's, that's true too. And, and um, but, I mean, for example, if, if you were to say to me, if you were to say, okay, I'm working on a piece. I know this guy, Mike Sharp. And, you know, I, from what I hear about, he's fairly knowledgeable about books and so forth. Um, and he's black. So I'm going to ask him, I wrote this one section in my book. And I'd like you to comment on whether or not, you know, I got it right. That's, well, that's good. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now a little bit offended because, uh, you know, I'm not monolithic. I can read your whole book. <laughs> and, 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 and don't just limit me to the section that deals with color or race. Excellent. Um, but, but you may ask me, and I feel quite okay with, with just dealing with that, with that section. So, um, so it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay to, if every time you called me, it was only a question of race, then I would basically see myself as your as your your racial sidekick, you know. So so make sure that you're you know when you're when you're asking for help, it's it's not as if that's the only thing they can can comment on. Uh, for example, when I wrote to this to this white community about my 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 black history book, I didn't tell them it was a black history book. I didn't ask them, what do you think of this book as a white uh, resident or a white person growing up in America? What I asked them was, 
what do you think of my book? Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and, and I got some of my richest comments just simply from not focusing on the color issue, but focusing on what you thought of my book. So just uh, one of the things is, is make sure we, 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 we embrace the entirety of someone and, and not just one aspect of them. No, I really did want to applaud that it, there is a, a, a uh, specific purpose rather than just, you know, I'm, I'm at a loss. Right, right, right. Help, help right. me. <laughs> yeah, and there's some, some, you know, some people are just at a loss and, and there may not be a lot of help. But sometimes if you've done some of your own work and you still have, you know, questions and thoughts, um, I, I just don't know of too many people who don't want to, to try to help, to be a part of, to part of a solution. There, there's it's some, you know. A, a common b- bond of no assumption. And I, right, I right, understand. right, right. And, 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 and uh, as I think it was Kiki was saying, it's really hard um, because the, the, the world of, of, of multiculturalism of people who will respond to you uh, when you have a story or a point that you're trying to, to get assistance with, um, they may not have the time or they may not have the, to, to, to keep responding to those kinds of questions. That's why those questions have to be part of a broader question of, 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 of the whole context and not just uh, of the simple racial context because then that starts to become very limiting. Yep. How are you doing, Carol? You're on mute. I actually was thinking as you were I talking. could see it. You, the yeah. smoke was coming out of your head. Yeah. I could see you yeah. smoke. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was. I was thinking sometimes being too polite is also indicative of a racial bias, you know, like, yeah, you know what I mean? And so I was thinking that I always had trouble seeing color. I, I just didn't from uh, the time I was young, you know? And uh, so I always talk to my black friends the way I do to my white friends because they all seem like friends or not, you know? Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's one way of approaching it. But you have to understand, you have white friends who you will approach with certain types of questions, but not with others, other types of questions, right? I mean, it's not like you approach all your white friends with the same question. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Michael. I'm like impossible to shut up if I have an opinion (laughs) and I can't even see if they don't think like me, it's okay. It's just that I ask everybody the same questions. I, it's All right, too but, 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 but then if you ask everyone the same questions, then your, your, your black friends will get asked the same questions as your yeah. white friends. And so yeah. there's, really, there's really no issue there. It's like everyone's equally offended by your question, I'm sure. But, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, my are we, How are we doing on time? Michael, right? have you... Um, David Chung, have you seen any difference with the whole George Floyd aftermath and what's been going on over the summer and fall for Black Lives Matter and everything like that? No, and so, so Dave, when you say like differences, what, like push me a little bit more on them. Well, in in just how, how people think about Black people, you know, how non-Blacks think about interacting with Black people and whether uh-huh. they're more aware or or more um, walking on eggshells yeah. or you know, anything like that. All all of that, and 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 this conversation we're having here is 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 a really important in, in indicator of the types of question of conversations that have been going on since the George Floyd and types of things like that. There there is there seems to be a more willingness um, for. Um, for there to be questions, for for there to to oh, it, it's okay to have a conversation around certain topics, and it's okay to say I don't really understand. I I did I didn't understand 
what was going on with things like, you know, George Floyd or, or other things like that. And so there's, there's, there's an openness to receive information because people are realizing there's a lot going on that I'm just not understanding here, that I'm missing here. And that's one of the most important things that I've seen as, and, and but I hear also a lot of what I'm hearing with this group here today is, um, you know, how do I approach? How do I ask the question without seeming like I'm intruding or I'm, I'm stupid, I don't understand. And that's why I said lots of times, uh, in particular people of color, which I understand best because I happen to be in that category, um, there is a willingness to respond where someone genuinely says, I don't understand, help me under understand this. So I'm starting to see a lot more of that. But on the other hand, I'm starting to see a lot of resistance to um, why, why do I have to, um, why do why are you lumping me in with this? I I I'm I like everybody, you know, and, and of course for for certain people of color, that's that's a very it's a nice thing to say, but it's also a very offensive thing to say because all of the multicultural people I know are not nice. So if you like everybody, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I'm not I'm not sure what you're saying. So so it's opened up people to to um, to to say, I don't understand, and I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to I'm willing to learn. Well, it's like I have to say this because it, I mean, it, you'll see what a dope I was, but it really bothered me. In the '60s, I mean, a black girl gave me a bite of her ice cream, and the whole freshman class stopped talking <laughs> for a whole year. Okay, so this is almost like not news. I used to wake up in the morning, look at my arm and wonder why it was white, okay? But a little black girl came selling Girl, girl Scout cookies one day. And I said to her, hey, do you, did your grandma know how to make black eyed peas? I'll, I'll trade her my spaghetti <laughs> recipe. Today, I think I would be much more uh, reticent about that because it seems stereotypic. But with the little but the, kid, the spaghetti, it would be so no, not the spaghetti, the black eyed peas. Oh, because oh, I, was living, <laughs> I was living in New York and I was willing to buy all the Girl Scout cookies she wanted because I was dying and I had to make black eyed peas. But, now, but, but the, 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 the thing you know that, that brings your, 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 your story to, to light, I mean, these are these are things that. Um, can be included in our in our in our manuscripts and our writing that reflect not that you're a, a, a racist or you don't understand, but they reflect how people were thinking and how the world was working. And that's what I mean. We have we we have so many rich things that go on in our life that aren't acceptable anymore, or or they may be may not, but they're they're really in part they're really an important part of our of our unfolding as an American culture. And so while you tell your story in a way that's, you know, sort of, you know, tongue in cheek, embarrassing a little bit because of what you were thinking, um, it's a very important part of evolution. And, and that's a very important part of, of multicultural storytelling or any kind of storytelling uh, uh, in, the, in the country. Yeah. Charlotte, I thought, you, I thought I saw you having uh, some smoke come out of your head. I have many, many thoughts and, you know, just, it's an interesting time. I, you know, I grew up in Eastern Washington and I don't like to make generalizations about parts of the country or people who live there, but, you know, it was hard getting out of that mindset. Sure. And, sure. you know, I've done a lot of work, I think, um, but still have a lot. But, but I think that's, I, I guess what part of when I say, let's have a conversation around multicultural, you know, uh, publishing, so it's, when you say it's hard because you've done so much work to move out of a mindset, uh, again, I think that in our storytelling, mm -hmm. in our just general storytelling, incorporating pieces of that becomes so important in terms of showing that the human side of, 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 of our society. 
it's and, sometimes and so, it's very painful you know it's yeah, very right painful. so i hope we don't lose that and i hope that sort of even this little small conversation triggers us to, to think about some of the absurd things that we thought or did around race or, or other matters that we no longer think in that way, but they still are part of the storytelling of what's going on and what has happened. And, and I hope they don't get lost because um, they're, they're, they're gems of, you know, when you, mm-hmm. take the, when you take the black eyed peas and the spaghetti, and I was sitting there <laughs> and said, you know, I said the spaghetti, but, but the truth is that's just, that's just uh, an important. I had, a, I had a, a friend that I worked with, two, two very, very quick stories. Um, one, when she was a little girl, she said she was around five or six. She was at a poolside and her mother was putting sunscreen on her. And she said, well, you know, why are you putting, on, putting this on me? So her mother says, so you don't turn dark or you don't turn brown or black or whatever you know nothing nothing racist whatsoever about it and the little girl took the cream and walked you know two uh two uh tiles down and start putting the cream on this little black boy and 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 her mother just freaked out because but her her mindset was i don't want him to get burnt or get to be brown but on the one hand while it's a very beautiful classic story of 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 the innocence of a child it shows the terror of the adult because we turned it into a whole different context of, of, of something something else. Um, we have lots of, that's my point, as, as, as white people, you have lots of really great stories to tell that are multicultural stories if you're willing to open yourself up and, and, and say, okay, I'm, I, I'll expose that. I'll talk about the spaghetti and the black eyed peas. I love that, by the way. Um, uh, not your thinking, but the you know the concepts. <laughs> hey, I got to tell you the one thing about I've always liked. I've always wondered why the black god was such a happy god, and we had Jesus on the crucifix. We had a suffering god, and black people had a happy god. What so happy god? Wondered, what happy god are you referring to? Because the Jesus I always saw was on the cross with nails through his hands. <laughs> Oh no, the one that lets you <laughs> sing and dance in church while we have to shut up and whisper. Oh no, that wasn't our God. That was our spirit. Oh well that, <laughs> I want that. I'm messing with you. <laughs> I know, I know. But, uh, but it's true. But right? but yeah, it's I mean I, I mean just just we we have to we have to create safe spaces to be able to ask a question about your happy God versus the God that I perceived as suffering. And, and, and now I think the realism is that um, I haven't grown up experience in the black church. Uh, there was nothing more suffering than our Jesus. Oh, God. So, so you would get a lot of feet kickback on that. You know, if you were trying to, you know, trying to push that out there something that, uh, uh, but that's your perspective. And yeah. that's what's important as your perspective, you saw something in a certain way uh, and you wondered about. Mm-hmm. Lynn, go ahead. Okay, great. Hi. I, I'm sorry I came in late. I'm, uh, I'm within another writing class. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to share that this is like an amazing conversation. I am completely immersed in this issue. Um, I'm writing a middle grade book called Entangled Roots, A Tale of Two Cousins. One cousin is biracial and must move in with his aunt and his female white cousin who live in a small Vermont town. And the cousins connect through music and nature. And so the whole point of what we're talking about is not classifying people, but having them find commonality between um, races and not not like just um so my characters are very rich in terms of who they are and they start out with racial inequality of feeling about each other but through time they get to know each other and the the young woman is the 12 year old has to deal with the racism that's happening in vermont which is quite evident 
and um, and together they work on those issues. So both the boy and the girl are working on the issues within um, in their community, which is a small white town. So I mean, I'm taking James Baldwin courses. I'm taking I've read like 25 books and YouTube's and the, the message is really comes on pretty similar. It's like don't categorize people only. Find out a lot more about them. And that's okay. what James Baldwin's whole point was. You know, if you just make someone, if you just make them so simple, whatever the category is, then then you you don't really get to know them. Yeah, well, Lynn, I mean, I just, yeah. I'll ahead, just Lynn. jump in real quickly. I, after the George Floyd, I was on a call with a bunch of colleagues and you know everybody was white. I mean, I'm not black and I'm not white, but I don't have any of the racial issues that black people do in the sense of you know being pulled over for you know driving while 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 not you know. Uh, but this guy who's an executive coach said, oh my God, I didn't realize that I had white privilege. And a lot of people don't even, yeah, white, yeah, don't even yeah. recognize white privilege. You know, then you've got Jordan Peterson and Bill Bennett. And so I think there's, this time is a really opportune time for Lynn to be writing this type of book because you can be exploring issues that people are trying to explore. You're saying this is an incredible conversation you know, I haven't had this kind of conversation in years. Um, and the whole idea of multicultural, I mean, I grew up in a multicultural area, but I didn't think about this person, this race, this, you know, I mean, those things didn't come up on a daily basis. But now I think people are much more willing to think about it and recognize it, no matter what race you are. And, and it sort of reminds me of, um, Somebody was on an, another call earlier. Who, his granddaughter, who's in Australia, said to him, um, "Grandpa, wh what is um, what is this whole thing about um, uh, about different races and and so something like that?" And and one of the lines that came, it was sort of like, "Why can't we all just get along?" <laughs> and you know, with this election, you know, people are talking about this country is very divided. Yeah, it's divided, but we have more commonality than we have division. So let's go, let's go look for that. Uh, so Lynn, your comments really hit home with me because you know, no matter what color skin you are, no matter where you were born, we're, we're, we're all humans. And this pandemic has, has been a big leveler in that sense. Yeah. At the same time, we're all human, but you're always black. And that's what I've heard. I've interviewed a lot of people that are black and have biracial kids. You, do, you don't ever let that go. That's still there. And you have to admit that and then move on from there, uh, you know? Right. Yeah, so I, I completely agree with what you're saying that it's, it's uh, there's a lot to this issue for sure. Michael, yeah, whole, can you talk about identity. what I'm saying? Yeah, identity is a big word these days. Yes. It's yeah. bigger than it's always been there, but it's it's a little bigger than it used to be. Right. Yeah. I, I think I think the one of the important ingredients to to us coming together, not so much, you know, uh, I, I like to say, you know, when I have these when I have workshops and conversations, it's not that I'm trying to get people to like each other. Uh, if that happens, that's great. But I'm trying to get people to to open up to understanding each other. And, and so that's why, you know, if, 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 you're, if, you're, if you're black, you're biracial, biracial Asian, or even uh, white, you, you, never, you never stop being that because that's a great part of who you are. But what you're always trying to do is figure out ways to understand how others play into your life. And that gets back to what Dave was talking about in terms of white privilege. Um, which is a very, on the one hand, it's a very simple concept. On the other hand, it's very complicated to a lot of white people because they have what's called white privilege. And, and I think the first thing that happens with that word is it's, it's offensive when, when someone says to you, oh, you have white privilege. And the first thing that a lot of my white friends say, Oh, you have no idea. I grew up without this. I didn't have this. I was poor. I was so forth and so on. And they name all these things, which made their lives horrible as a person growing up. 
and they're absolutely right, but they still had white privilege. And, and, and so the, the, the thing that I think post George Floyd is getting people to understand that having white privilege is not an offensive thing, but not to understand it and try to, 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 to accept it um, as, as in terms of what it means in relationship to me um, is, is, is very, very important. For example, quick thing. How many of you by a show of hand, when you were 13 years old, when you walked into a room, you thought about your color? I never, ever, until I was probably 40 years old, walked into a room without being conscious of my color. That's the difference. It's not a bad difference in terms of that it keeps us apart. It's, it's a difference. And so if I understand your difference and you understand my difference, then at least as we communicate and we write and we write these stories um, that include, you know, a biracial kids in Vermont or, or what happened growing up, uh, you know, in, in another town and, and the, 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 the crew, rowing and crew, uh, including black people on that, we used to always joke in, uh, in the black world that, you know, there's a couple of areas that you'll never see us in. And one was, was crew and rowing, uh, rowing in the water and the other was hockey. Um, but both are untrue, but that's the myth we, we sort of like put out there. Uh, so so th th those are the kind of things that we just really have to, we, we don't have to spend our time grappling with, but we, we have to try to understand and be open to the fact that I want you to, to at some point reflect on what does he mean when he says he never walked into a room without being conscious of his color um, and, and sort of struggle with that a little bit. Michael, can I just jump in for a second? You probably know this guy, Malcolm Gladwell, The Tipping Point. Yeah, his books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody here knows this guy is a, is a major, major author. Uh, his mother is Jamaican. I didn't know that. And he, he uh, when he had long hair, he had an afro. You can just look this up. He would get pulled over by the cops on a routine basis because they thought he was black. I mean, he is half black. And but he doesn't look black, you know. Oh, so wow. he, he he cut his. I mean, he was getting eighty grand a speech. Okay, um, had nothing to do with his race. What black? I mean, just it had to do with the fact that he was a bestseller. Okay, that but but he cut his hair and he stopped getting pulled over. Hmm. And he'll talk to you about this. Um, but that's just you know driving while black people. I mean, that, that's a fact. You know, I mean, people getting getting rousted i mean this is just part of our society and we have to sort yeah. of come to terms with it and figure out how not to do that we just we have to do a lot more of just talking about it and 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 again um i'd love to see some of you um put your work towards um just consider just play with the idea of, of publishing with a multicultural publishing company um, or at least exploring su submitting your work, um, just just as another way of expanding your world as you would generally do as an author, um, and that's just that's just one way of doing it that probably many of us would not consider unless invited uh, personally to do so. And I am personally inviting you all to do so, and I'll give you two companies to start with, and the first is Acute by Design. Um, and you can find them by cupidesign.com. And they um, do children's and adult, uh, serious adult books. And then the other is Lee and Lowe Publishing out of New York uh, City, which is the granddaddy of all uh, multicultural black publishing companies in the country. They've been around since, uh, I believe, the early 60s, and they have quite an operation. What's that uh, called again? Lee, Lee L-E-E, -E, and Lowe. L-O-W-E. L-O-W. Mm -hmm. And they're out of New York City. Uh, really great, great company. Uh, I uh, could only uh, mm -hmm. wish to be as, as expansive as they are. 
questions, thoughts? Well, getting back to publishing. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Every, everything is publishing. You know, every story. <laughs> uh, what yeah. kind of uh, what kind of books do you think in this, if it's a genre, are are needed now, or like children's books? And uh, do you have any thoughts about? I I I I actually have some very deep thoughts on it, but I'll be very very quick. There are, there are, there are two types. I mean, I think there's books needed in every category. However, uh, in children's books. I, I'm less than enthused by the, the onslaught of, of uh, shallow character books with, uh, you know, these just flimsy paintings of kids that happen to possibly look like they are of color. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the storyline uh, oftentimes will be around um, there being, you know, you know, they fall in love with their hair, they're being ashamed of their hair, they're or you know, oh. or some, some as, physical aspect of themselves, and I and I and I and I say in many many groups, um, when we write these books, or when there's so many of those books on the market, and they 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 are important. I don't want to take away the importance, but when you get them into the kindergarten, in the first grade, in the second grade, and I taught in those levels, and then you ask the kids to go up and pick up pick up a book. All right, kid, it's book time. Go get a book. And then the, the, the black kid has to go and look at all the books where my hair was kinky or my hair was this or, you know, my face was this or this kind of thing. Um, I think that um, that does a disservice to, to those mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. And we need richer, deeper books that portray those things as positive, but they're, not, they're just part of what life is. They're not they're not the center of the book. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so so in children's books, I see a, a need for there to be deeper stories that are traditionally kids' stories. The kid loves it, whether they're black, white, red, or whatever, they love it because you've written a good story, which <laughs> may incorporate some, some multicultural aspect of whatever. Um, so th those are very, very important. Mm -hmm. Middle school readers, um, extremely we, we we have so few i mean there's a lot of good ones don't get me wrong but we have so few um uh books that that speak to uh the multicultural experience uh and so from so on and then of course when you get into the uh, adult novels uh i'm still waiting for the next uh visible man to be written <laughs> and so uh that's a good one <laughs> yeah so so um so I, I hope that helps a little bit, but yeah. I think it's needed in every area. But if you're going to write children, um, try to read something that, that digs down deeper, not in terms of creating a story that's so wild, unique that a kid doesn't want to read it, but something mm -hmm. that touches a kid's heart um, without uh, touching uh, sort of some of them. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to come out with that book in a year from now. Well, I, I hope you find Yay. a multicultural publishing house. <laughs> I, I am my own publisher house. Okay, well. And I also just um, have an illustrator that's from Ghana that's going to help me out in terms of um, seeing things um, from mm -hmm. different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's just a lot of, you know, the more you read, the more that you see that what you're talking about when I've interviewed black um, mothers of racial kids is like, don't make this kid so that the black kid's not going to want to read it. Just like you're saying, don't make it into something that's uh, a negative experience rather than bring them in in terms of what they like to do. So my character is a pianist and he's a the biracial, and he's a, a classical musician and, you know, just getting an in-depth of uh, who the character is. It's just yeah, I mean, but, but but be clear, um, you can bring in painful experiences, you can bring in negative experiences, but have it go somewhere. You know, don't don't just sit there as a as a, as a negative experience and, and not taking it take it anywhere because you you do have sort of a and this is weird to say because you know this is not technically what what, what writing is, but I think we do have as authors 
in today's world and the things that are going on to write in a way that we expose maybe by portraying painful, hurtful things that are happening in, in, in that whole world, but we take it somewhere so that the reader, when they close the book, has a sense of, 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 of a deeper understanding and, and a deeper value in terms of um, what's going on in, in that world. So whether you make the, the, the young boy, uh, the young character, a pianist or a, a, a street thug, Make it go somewhere. Make it have some 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 depth. Absolutely. And the, what happens in the story is that the there's all these jabs that happen at the you know while they're in in Vermont of that this getting called a nigger and getting called you know that that the family this girl has the young girl from mm -hmm. um, from Vermont has to wrap her head around like saying this is really what happened. And the boy saying, "Yes, that's what happens. You yep. didn't know that." But can can I? Um, I'm sorry. Can, can I? Can I just inject for a moment here? Sure. And then, um, and what I'd like to say about me injecting is that uh, this is a great conversation. So uh, after I'm done injecting, please carry on. Um, Michael, I know we were originally scheduled for two thirty, so I'm just going to say the next talk is at three o'clock anyway. So we can let this dialogue go on, which I think is great. Um, I need to take a quick break, but I don't think there's any reason. It's fine. We'll be hosted. I'll be on. Um, and I'm going to take the moment to monopolize just a piece of this, Michael, and just say, um, this has been great for me. I'm a super small publisher. I've only done two books so far, working on the third. And the fourth, I've been grappling with how do I diversify for my own. And when I think about what you said about how many people when they were a 14 year old, what I thought was, I did think about that. But at that age, I thought about it because I lived on the east side of Brockton, uh, right by Hill Street. And I was one of the few white people. Mm -hmm. And I did go in and because I had been, I knew I was different because I got punched when I said, the n-word you know and and i would fight and uh i would go if you could say it i could say it and this kind of thing well how many but all that to get, get to now before you stop saying the n-word <laughs> <laughs> and uh and then uh and when i got older what i've had to grapple with now is my authentic experience when i look around like i thought for a long time i just thought i am diverse by how i grew up but i'm not diverse by how i grew up because i'm preconditioned already and i just look at my own circle and go I've got nothing in my own writing, in my own circle, when I really want to say, hey, don't you know a non-white author? Like I look at my circle and I go, no, however life has landed, mm -hmm. I am not, that 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 didn't uh, cure me, you know what I mean? It didn't fix yeah, my yeah, disposition, yeah. I am still who I am. Um, but I just wanna thank you because the one thing you said at the beginning that I thought, oh, the light bulb, as a writer myself, I've grappled with the idea and dismissed it a bit like that is not my expertise, but what you said, which I thought you so lazy, I miss this mm -hmm. bulb is, mm -hmm. I do have an expertise, Absolutely. which is my grappling, mm -hmm. my experience with the grappling, that is, uh, that's, you know, anyway, Your so expertise. thank you. And, and I'm gonna mute, but please do carry on. And then we'll start the next one around three o'clock. All right, appreciate okay. your comments. Michael, gonna, can we get your contact information or? Sure. Like, um, yeah, because I, I'm, I am, uh, Lynn, you have a comment, right? Right, I have to finish this one second, Lynn. Um, so I am going to start winding down. So if there's any last minute things that folks like to ask, you know, go right ahead. But my contact information is uh, acute by design at gmail.com. Uh, Michael Sharp. That's not part of the address. The Michael Sharp is my name. Yeah. But acute by design. Uh, acute as in an angle. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Is exactly. that your is that your angle? <laughs> that that was the angle. That was. You're, the, you're kind of cute too, but uh, you know. Well, all right, well that, that works too. <laughs> but the, my the, the acute came about from my last name, which is Sharp. Oh. Uh, ah, I got you. I I think you had something, Lynn. Oh, just um, I'm planning to have lots of readers that are both black and 
multiracial and white. And I don't know if you know of other people that you think of as readers that you think would be great for a middle school um, to review it. Yeah, I, 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 um, when it, when it's, when it's ready, you want, you know, send it to me and I, I can pass it on to, uh, if, if not comment on my own, send it on to other people. If you, if that's what you want, that, uh, definitely would probably be different than what you're used, you're used to. So, no, that's exactly what I want. Just be, just be, just be open. I have to tell you, Lynn is a total expert on animal tracking in the world. Oh. She is amazing. Yeah. Like she, was, she was posting these pictures of tracks that she'd find in the woods and then we'd have to guess what they were, you know? And it was really fun. Oh, you should probably look at, we just published a uh, author, a uh, woman uh, out of uh, New Hartford, Connecticut. And she did a, a, a book around the pond in the back of her house. And, and a, a big part of it are all these animals and their, their tracks and the trails that they leave behind, uh, identifying what kind of animals they are. Um, great, great little sort of little pond story. Nice. Um, any other questions, thoughts? I am going to wind down. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed this. Um, I uh, just, just got out of the hospital yesterday. And so I was, I was tempted to, to cancel but i know but i i enjoy i i so enjoy doing this and i'm so happy that i didn't and I, i'm really i hope i hear from all of you I, i'd love to uh you know eat, read stuff or just continue on conversations um and uh god bless thank you so much thank you